Hey guys, it's Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun. Welcome back to another quick tip. Uh, today we had a question that came in. Uh, basically, uh, the gentleman wanted to be able to click on any row in his data set. And even if there's already existing colors, like as you can see, this has some green, there's some red here. Whenever he selects a different row, he wants it to change that row and highlight it, but not just highlight it, maybe yellow or something. He wants the font color to be blue, and he wants to make the font to be bold, but he doesn't want to jack up the current color set. So the red should return, and so should the green return once you click to a different row. So that's a little bit more difficult because if you're using VBA for the whole thing, you would have to program it to recall uh, the previous color. You have to save those into an array or into some other sheet. I found, uh, when I was thinking about this, I think the simplest way to do it is actually to just, uh, I had an idea with conditional formatting. So what I'm going to do is essentially I'm going to set the conditional formatting to look at the, um, the sheet 2, which is an invisible sheet. And basically, I'm going to set it up, there's one, two, three, four columns, right? So I'm going to say, all right, if I click on, let's say, row uh, 3, like I have selected right here, it's going to say, okay, row 3 on this other sheet, row 3, I'm going to make all four of these equal to something, maybe just the, the number 1. So I hit contr uh, Control Enter. But anyway, I'm going to have VBA just put the number 1 or something to make it not blank. Then my conditional formatting will say, hey, on this other sheet, if the other sheet on this, this row is uh, not blank, then let's do some conditional formatting. And then, of course, every time you click to a new row, it would need to clear out this whole sheet before it does another row and makes it 1. So let's see how I do that. Uh, and if you have a better way to do this, please write it in in the comments. We'd love to see uh, different ideas from different users. So in this example, I'm going to hit uh, excuse me, Alt F11 to get in the Visual Basic Editor. And here's the code that we had to start with uh, that he gave me. Uh, he said he was you know kind of struggling, and he's using the cells object, which is the right way to go. But if you want to affect multiple cells, you need to use the cells object uh, not for well, he's clearing the whole sheet, and then he's taking the target, and he wanted to take a range, so you could use the range object in conjunction with the cells object. We're going to show you how to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out these two lines of code for right now uh, in order to, where's my comment? There's comment block. Let's create a little space so that we can get to work. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, uh, as you can see, is we have the worksheet selection change, which is the right way to go. That means on sheet 1, in the sheet 1 object, if you do a worksheet and you go to selection change, that means every time you change selection, it's going to run that macro and trigger that, that effect. So what we need to do is we need to get, uh, first of all, we always want to get, uh, get selected row num. So we'll just do something like current row num equals, and we'll do selection dot row. What that does, let me put a breakpoint right here by clicking on this gray line, and I'll show you. I'm going to click on row three again. That triggers our macro, and when we want to get the selection dot row, I'm going to hit F8. We can see in this variable the number three is trapped. That's the dot row of my selection. So now we have row three trapped, and we always can know what row it is. The next thing that we need to do, uh, well, we need to clear the other sheet, but we don't know that yet. So let's just go ahead and try this. Uh, we're going to take the, uh, let's see, we're going to take the sheet two dot range object, and I'm going to put my open parentheses, but I'm going to put a few space bars. If you've never seen using the range object in conjunction with the cells object, it's kind of interesting. So you see here it says uh, put the cell one. Uh, and then comma, and then the other cell too. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the first cell, so cells object. What's the row we need? Yeah, it's the the variable cur row num. Remember, currently it's row three, but it might be a different row next time. Comma, and so in this case we have row one or or a. I'm going to put one in parentheses. And now you don't have to put all these space bars, but uh, I'm just for effect, so it's easier to read, comma. Now the second cell, we're going to do the current row, uh, comma, column 1, so A3, comma, through, we want to do uh, A, B, C, D, we want to do D3. So, so let's use the cells object again. We're also going to use the current row num, which is currently row three. But what column do we want to end on? We want to go A all the way through D, or column four. And then I'll do my closing parentheses. 
Uh, so what this does, again, the range object, if you use two different cells objects with a comma like this, it says, hey, I want to do the current row of column one all the way to the current row column four. So this all the way to here is uh, now going to be equal to something. So we'll just put a one just like in our example. Uh, this may break a little bit because I, I need to actually tell it sheet two here and put sheet two here. Uh, so you may, if you're if you're following along, you may run into that. Let's click on row four, for example. Let's see if it worked. Okay, it seems it's not wanting to trigger. So I wonder what's going on with that. Are we we're still in break mode, aren't we? Oh, we haven't finished our, our first run. Sorry, let's click on row five. Okay, here we go. So the current row number is five. And now we're saying uh, the current row number, comma one through four equals one. It's going to break because it doesn't know what you're talking about because you need to say sheet two dot cells and sheet two dot cells. So that tells it the other sheet with the same range, uh, row five, A5 through D5, is going to be equal to the number 1. So if I hit F8, we can take a peek at sheet 2, and on row 5, A, uh, A5 through D5 just became equal to the number 1. And that's important because our conditional formatting will take over in just a moment. So let's hit F8. Let's stop where we're at, and let's do a little conditional formatting magic. So if I hit Alt, Alt O D, excuse me, is the conditional formatting. So if you hit new rule, we're going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click on um, I'm going to click on A5 and I'm going to hit F4, F4. F4. The F4 function key takes off and toggles the dollar signs for the absolute versus relative references, which is really cool. Uh, let's try that really quick. I should have clicked on A1. I don't know if it matters. So let's format what we want it to be just as a test. So uh, we'll do the font color. Let's say they wanted it to be this color blue right here. And then we want it to be bold. Um, that's good enough. Let's hit OK and hit O. Oh, wait, hold on a second. So what I want to do is I actually want to see if sheet two of A5 is not equal to blank. So double quote, double quote. Let's try that. I may have just messed that up. Let's let's hit apply. Okay. Now we need to hit Alt O D. I want to make sure that applies to everything. So actually. Let's open this. I should have said A1 and then said it applies to everything. A1 and then applies to, and I go to applies to, I'm just going to click on this little uh, everything. And that'll know relatively that each cell on uh, sheet 2 needs to relate to, uh, sh uh, let's see. So let's, let me see here. Okay. So we need to clear all the other sheets, or all the other cells in sheet two. So clear sheet two. So sheet two dot cells, all the cells is what that means, dot clear contents. So let's see. First we get the row number, which is row three. We're going to clear everything in the other sheet. Uh, then we're going to say only the current row, row three, is going to be equal to one. And let's see what happened there. Okay, something's wrong with the conditional formatting. Once again, Alt O D. Let's see. So, sheet two A one is not equal to blank. Okay, I need to take these dollar signs out because this needs to be relative. So, if A one is not blank according to A one in this sheet, then it will become uh, blue. And then that since the dollar signs are gone, now it'll say, okay, well, B1 relative to the same position. If B1 on the other sheet uh, is not blank, then B1 on this sheet will be blue. So that, now, nah, there we go. Okay. So if I click here, it, it's going to get the row four. It's going to clear all the cells on the other sheet. And now it's just going to make everything equal to one on row four. See, row four is now equal to one or, or something that's not blank. So now it's working. So if I click here, oh, I didn't trigger the event, did it? Am I still in break mode? I am. Whoops. Once I took the break thing off. Okay, so anyway, now it's working. So you can click anywhere you want, right? And it's it goes ahead and puts that on the current row. And then it does the conditional formatting does not jack up your, um, your current formatting. So you could 
have these, um, you know, with a background color. Uh, let's pick out something interesting like orange. So it doesn't mess with that. It'll always bring it back the original. That's why conditional formatting is the way to go because you don't have to save a whole bunch of information. Okay, if you have any questions on that, if you have a better way to do that, or just any kind of comments, please post them in the comment section. Be sure to click like and subscribe for more Excel VBA fun. Uh, we like to uh, do all kinds of fun projects like that. So, so uh, please let us know your thoughts, and thank you, and God bless.